Hello crafty friends, it's Jess from JessCrafts.com and today I am here with a card for the Newton's Nook 5 year anniversary celebration blog hop. There will be a link to the blog hop in the video description below and I'll talk more about that later in the video. To get started I wanted to create an ocean background for my permaid Newton and I took a piece of 110 pounds recollection cardstock. It's what I like to use with my Copics although there's a couple cardstocks out there that are great. And I'm going to use some uh, painter's tape, but the really low tack kind, to stick my paper to a uh, piece of scrap paper so that I can um, create a mess on the edges without worrying about it too much and that my paper won't shift as I do my technique. So what I'm doing is I'm taking the side of the marker and I'm swishing it across my paper. I am gently placing it on my paper at the edge and then pulling it off on the other edge. It's a very light motion and I think that that lightness of it is important and using the side of the marker is important to achieving the overall look if you want this sort of light wave bit. We're not trying to create full coverage. We're not trying to um, get rid of any lines or make any perfect blending. We are actually looking to have those lines there. I am starting with a B12, shifting to a B02, and then to a B04 as my light to dark colors. And once I have gotten to the B04, I'm going to go back up to the B02, then to the B12 to sort of blend everything just a little bit. With my B02, as I'm using the side of the marker, it's taking up some ink and my marker was running a little low. I can take my refill and just dot on a few more drops of ink from my refill to finish up the project, but then I'll want to go back later and fully refill the marker by taking out the chisel nib. But just a quick tip if you're running a little low in the middle of a project. And I find that by going over the B12 through most of the surface, I am able to add some depth to the look because even in the darker parts, when there's a little bit of white space in between the lines, it's not really white space, it's the lighter color. And it, it just, by having a couple of colors there, gives it a bit more depth. Now, to create some bubbles in the water, to emphasize that it is water, you could do a few things. You could use your zero marker and draw in little dots, but I find it hard to make it look random when you're using a marker to intentionally place each and every bubble. So what I like to do is I have a spray bottle of isopropyl alcohol that I like to keep with my crafty things. It helps to clean up things, but I'm going to basically just tap the edge of um, the, I don't even know what you would call the, the straw that's in it. I mean, it's not straw for drinking for sure. Um, and so I tap that and it just sort of like creates little dots all over the paper. And that makes it look a lot more random than if I were to try to go in and put them in myself. Now, because I'm using isopropyl alcohol, this alcohol is not the same alcohol that's in your markers. It's not the same alcohol that's in your colorless blender. So once you put this alcohol down, I would actually not recommend coloring over it with Copics any longer. If you were looking to go over it again with your Copics, you could use Colorless Blender to create the same effect, and going over Colorless Blender will never have a negative impact on your markers. So just a quick tip there and something to consider. You don't want to use isopropyl alcohol near your marker tips or color over it. Just to be safe, it can ruin your markers. Next up, I am coloring the Permade Newton, and I'm just actually coloring him on the scrap of paper that was left as I created my background. So you can see that that background we just created is cut out. And I'm coloring him with BG13, 18, and 15. This is one of my favorite teal combinations, and one that I find I use a lot. It's it was hard to come up with what my very favorite Copic combinations are and it's always great when you can see what other people like to use a lot because I wound up with some colors that they were close together so I thought that they would work really well together and then they turn out to not blend as easily. So this one I did find worked as one of the teal combinations. 
and I'm covering everything with a layer of BG13. Then for the shadows, I'm not even I'm not doing very realistic shadows. I'm just doing some shadows that add interest and depth. So I'm putting the shadows along the ridges of his tail and at the very tips of his tail. I blend it out with the B15, then back to the B13. Next up, I'm going to color Newton's body. I want Newton to look like the original Newton, who is an orange tabby cat. And so when the first couple times I tried to color Newton in Newton colors, I started using YRs, which are their which is Copic version of orange. There's no O markers. They are the yellow reds. And it never quite looked like a cat. And I found that actually a lot of E's helped. There are some E's with orangey or yellowy undertones. And so I picked E95 and then a YR20. Or sorry, YR Yes, YR20. And so there is one orange in there, but it's a much lighter orange than I originally anticipated needing. And then for the stripes, I'm going to use E97. Again, my shadows are not necessarily the most realistic. They're just meant to add some depth. The way that they're adding depth here is by adding a shadow to the top and bottom. It gives Newton's face a rounded look. Even though if he were in the ocean, all of the light would be shining down from the top. And so actually that's where the highlight should be. So again, it's not realistic, but neither is a cat mermaid, so we're just going with it. And these markers, the E95 and YR20, they are not the easiest to blend. So working in a small space can cause, uh, can allow you to blend them a little bit more easily. And so that's why I'm going over my shadows again and then blending them out a bit, especially in the face where it's going to be most noticeable because those markers aren't really next to each other in the color order. They're not necessarily meant to blend together, but they do do the trick. And I do think they gave a pretty realistic orange cat look. Now there's some kind of little spot here on my coloring and I couldn't figure out what it was, but um, ultimately I kind of decided to live with it. I wanted to add some stripes because again, Newton is an orange tabby. And so to add the stripes, I am using the very tip of my brush tip marker and I'm having a very light hand, but I'm not trying to make a straight line. I'm intentionally trying to make my line look a little scribbly or fuzzy, but it's just barely touching the tip. And I would consider making sure that the layers underneath have had at least a few seconds to dry. If the layers underneath are really wet, it can be hard to achieve a finer line because it will just start blending with the marker that's already present on the paper. Then I use some E21 and E50 to create a little bit of color on the tummy. And there again, I just created a shadow on the top and bottom. It's mostly a drop shadow from where his head meets his body and from where his tail meets his body. Then once he's finished, I went around it with a uh, Memento Tuxedo Black marker because I fussy cut out Newton. In this case, I really did want it to be fussy cut because I want him to look like he's really part of the ocean scene. I also took some craft glassine paper from Tim Holtz. I have found that this has been discontinued, so I wasn't able to link it up, which was quite disappointing because it's a really cool paper. I cut out both the ocean and that paper with a distressed edge dye from Cat Scrappiness because I kind of, I always think of that dye when I think of oceans because it looks like a torn up treasure map. And I think that craft glassine paper particularly looks like a sort of treasure map material. I also wanted to spray a little bit of shimmer spray on top of my ocean. What's nice about having worked with Copics in order to create the background versus distress inks is I can layer on something water-based like shimmer spray without changing up the ink. So if I really like my background already, I can add that layer without adding any, you know, without changing it at all because of course distress inks would react with that. Then I'm just going to add some simple adhesive behind it. I did have to dry it here again because it was wet from the spray and I wanted to stamp my sentiment. I decided to use the Let's Be Mermaids sentiment. 
you can in the stamp set there's also the permade sentiment so you could customize this to see say let's be permades too you just have to get a little creative with masking i also since it was the very first time i used the stamp i did stamp it off on a piece of scrap paper before bringing it to my final project which is something i would always recommend i use versafine ink because it does give a good impression of sentiments almost always the first time but no reason not to just stamp it off and sort of guarantee a little bit better perfection Anyway, that is it for my card today. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're interested in more craft tutorials, be sure to subscribe to my channel. Also, check out the blog hop where you can win a $25 gift certificate, and I'll share the sale for some of the new products from Newton's Nook Designs. Thank you for watching. Bye.